Hi, my name is Zach Gleason. I'm the MSR Water Lab Manager, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the MSR SC200 Community Chlorinate Maker. It comes in this little kit, which includes the electrochlorinator device, a power adapter for 12 volt battery, a salt water solution preparation and storage bottle, a starter packet of salt for making your first solution, a chlorine storage bottle, a couple of different measuring tools for ensuring you're adding the correct quantity of chlorine, a small packet of test strips for testing to ensure that you're actually getting the dose you desire, an instruction booklet, and then there are pictorial instructions printed on the inside of the box. The first step in preparing to make chlorine is producing the salt water solution. So to do that, I use my salt water solution bottle and I'm going to add salt to the fill line here on the bottom of the bottle. So I remove the cap. It takes about 50 grams of salt for each run of the community chlorine maker. So I'm gonna add my salt. Kind of level it out a little bit and make sure that I'm at the line or close to it. The next thing I'm going to do is add water. The water is added to the fill line on the bottle. Replace the lid and shake until all the salt is dissolved. So the next thing you want to do when you're going to make corn is connect the, the system to power. So the, the kit comes with alligator clips for adapting to a 12 volt battery, but there are also options available for a vehicle adapter and for a wall outlet adapter. The first thing you do is connect your adapter to the device. Next, use your alligator adapters to connect to the positive and negative electrodes on the battery. It's important to use a 12 volt battery, but you can use any amperage from a, a normal vehicle battery to a motorcycle battery. When doing this, you should get indicator lights showing up on the actual device, showing that you have connected to power. The next step in the process, now that we have our salt solution prepared, and our device connected to power is to actually make the chlorine solution. So to do that, I'm gonna add my brine water to the device, filling to the line on the side of the device. Then I'm gonna push the power button once. This will start the electrolysis reaction. The white light indicates that it's working properly. As the electrolysis process begins, you're going to see bubbles forming and the light's going to continue to stay on white for five to seven minutes until the system is, run, is done running, at which point it will beep and you will know that you've successfully prepared your chlorine solution. Now that the run is complete, the next thing to do is to treat the water. This can be done uh, using the measuring cup or the scoop that comes with the kit. The scoop is designed to measure the correct amount to treat one 20 liter jerry can. The one run produces about 50 milliliters of 0.8% chlorine, which is sufficient to treat 200 liters of water, which is 10 20 liter jerry cans or one 200 liter barrel of water. You can dose directly from the device by pouring into the scoop, or if you want to dose it later, you can use the storage bottle that comes with the kit. This allows you to either transport the solution farther away from where you store the battery or to use it later in the day as it keeps this chlorine fresh for up to 24 hours. Now that I have my chlorine solution prepared, I'm going to use it to treat a 20 liter jerry can. To do that, I'm going to use the scoop that came with the kit. You want to make sure that you fill the scoop full. 
Next, I'm going to remove the lid from my jerry can. You want to take care to make sure you get all of the chlorine solution into the container. Then it's a good idea to either mix or stir the container to ensure that the chlorine is evenly spread throughout. Then you're going to wait 30 minutes before consuming any of the water to ensure that all the microbes have been eliminated. Now that we've waited 30 minutes to ensure that the water's been treated, we want to confirm that sufficient chlorine was added by using the provided test strips. Take one out of the foil packet and move it back and forth in a small sample of water for two to five seconds. Once the color has developed, compare it to the scale on the outside of the packet to ensure that the sufficient amount of chlorine has been added. As you can see, we're between one and two ppm of chlorine added, which is exactly where we want to be to make sure our water is safe. The next thing I want to talk to you about is how to know what's going on when the device doesn't operate. There's two main reasons that it won't run. The first is insufficient power. What will happen is when you connect it to a battery that doesn't have enough power and you try to run it, you will get a red error light immediately. That's how you know that it's time to charge your battery. The other issue that can occur is that you can have not enough salt in your brine water solution. If that's the case, when you add it to the device and try to operate it, you'll get a purple indicator light and the run won't complete. This can either happen immediately, as it just did, or partway through the run, depending on how much brine you do have in your solution. In order to maintain the device, it's important to rinse it before you store it. If you don't, white crystals like this will develop inside and outside of it. To get rid of them once they have developed, all you need to do is rinse with a vinegar or water solution. All the crystals should re-dissolve, and then you can easily dispose of them. Thank you for joining me for this tutorial on the MSR SC200 Community Chlorine Maker. You are now equipped to use it to treat water for years to come. If you have any other questions, please visit our website, msrglobalhealth.com, or email us at global.health at cascadedesigns.com. Thanks again.